you for joining us at Hope Lutheran Church for Worship Online. We are so glad that you are here. And if you could do us a favor, if you could like and subscribe to our YouTube channel, it helps us do what, Pastor Carl? Helps us to do what? Yeah. Uh, well, we'll get more viewers. I don't know. Yeah. What? What? Reach more people with the good oh, news of Jesus Christ. We'll reach more people with the good news of Jesus Christ. Oh, okay. That, I'll go for that. Yes. <laughs> well, spring is here in the desert, but things are not slowing down. Right, Pastor Carl? That's absolutely correct. We're living in the glow of Easter. Exactly right. Living in the light of the resurrection, and we're continuing to reach people. we got Camp Hope coming up. We've got our Synod Assembly happening right here at Hope in a couple weeks. That's right. We just have so much going on. We're going to be sending kids to camp this summer. It is just an incredible uh, kickoff to even more ministry that's happening. And this is the second week of Coachella. That's right. Exactly right. All those Coachella kids. So all you Coachella kids that are sleeping in this morning, you can watch uh, watch us online and hear that good news that Jesus Christ lived, died, and rose again for who? Us. Us. You. For you. That's all of exa us. Exactly, Everyone. Exactly right. So in, if you would like to help us support and reach more people with that good news, and send it, including our Camp Hope, sending kids to camp, all the incredible things that we're doing to form the faith of uh, young people, uh, there are a couple ways that you can give. Mm -hmm. One, you can mail in an offering to Hope Lutheran, Lutheran Church at 45900 Portola Avenue in Palm Desert, California at 92260. What else can you do, Pastor Carl? You can text to give at 84321. Exactly. And they can go to? The website, and you can press the To Give button. That's right. Our, what, what's our website? HopePD.org. Ah, you got it. I can't <laughs> tri trip him up. It's like a new man from the resurrection. Look at this glow. Oh. Oh. <laughs> He's got it. Go to HopePD.org today, because there you'll find all of the incredible things that are happening right here at Hope. It's a great way to share with your friends, too. So it's HopePD, as in Palm Desert, dot org. Pretty easy. Pretty easy. I, if I can remember, you can remember. <laughs> That's right. And now let us remember the sacrifice that God gave in sending his son, Jesus Christ, as we worship together. He is risen. He is, he is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Hallelujah. Well, let's worship. The good news for this third week of Easter comes from the book of Luke, the 24th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now on that same day, two of Jesus' disciples were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, What are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Clopas, answered him, are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? He asked them, What things? They replied, The things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that he had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it, just as the women had said, but they did not see him. Then Jesus said to them, Oh, how foolish you are and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening and the day is now nearly over. 
So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour, they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions gathered there. They were saying, the Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. The good news of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. And let us pray. Gracious God, may the words of our mouths and the meditations of our hearts be pleasing to you this day, O Lord. Amen. Now, one of the many things that amazes me in life is how people can often look at the same thing and see it completely differently. To test that out, I'm going to ask you a question you probably never thought about before. Ready? Okay, how many holes are there in a straw? That's right, how many holes are there in a straw? Do me a favor and give me your answer in the comments below. It seems like a simple question, doesn't it? But in a poll of 6,000 U.S. adults taken last August, 47% of the people said one, 46% said two, and 7% said they didn't know. Nowhere is the ability to see something different more evident than in art. I've always marveled at the way an artist can look at a blank canvas or piece of stone and create something beautiful. One of my favorite artists of all times is Michelangelo. While his paintings are incredible, I'm especially impressed with his sculptures. The David in Florence, the Piata and Moses in the Vatican, they're all amazing, and I can't help but wonder how he was able to so diligently and purposefully chip away at the stones to create such masterpieces. Well, Michelangelo was once asked that very question, and his response was quite profound. He said, every block of stone has a statue inside it, and it's the task of the sculptor to discover it. I saw the angel in the marble and carved until I set him free. It wasn't his technical skill that made him a master. It wasn't special tools or unique training. It was his vision, what he saw when he looked at the slab of marble before him. What is it that you see when you look at the world around you today? If you're like me, it's hard to see anything but fear, anxiety, struggles, and disagreements. It's difficult to look past people arguing over what the future will look like and what we will be facing. And it leaves me feeling as if everything is out of control, as if the world is falling apart. The feelings of fear, uncertainty, and insecurity that we are all experiencing must have been the same feelings in the hearts of Jesus' disciples after his crucifixion. Not only had the one they believed to be the Savior been executed, but by all accounts, they were next. Imagine how dejected, afraid, and hopeless they must have felt. And so here we find two of Jesus' disciples, Cleopas and possibly his wife Mary, making the seven-mile journey from Jerusalem to their home in Emmaus. Exhausted and discouraged, it must have felt as if their whole world was falling apart and they no longer knew what to believe in. And it is there that Jesus meets them on the way. He doesn't come to them in Jerusalem or wait for them at home. He doesn't tell them to make some holy pilgrimage or to go to some sacred place. Instead, he meets them where they are, on the road, right smack in the middle of all the pain, frustration, and fear that overwhelms them, even though they don't recognize him. And look what happens. First, he opens up the scriptures, helping them make sense of recent events and all of life in light of God's redemptive work in and through the cross. And then he shares a meal, lifting and blessing bread, breaking it and giving it to them. 
And amid these simple and symbolic actions, their eyes were opened and they recognized him. Through the hearing of God's promise and the sharing of the meal, the eyes of these disciples are opened and they recognize not just the person of Jesus, but the presence of the Lord, the God whose powerful word called forth light from darkness and gives life to the dead. And then he's gone, and they know they need to be gone too. So they get up, venture the dangerous evening road back to Jerusalem to tell of what they've seen. Why? Because they can't help it. You can't keep news this good to yourself. Can you find yourself in the story? Have there been times in your life that you felt that God has left you or wandered, wondered if he even exists? Have there been tragedies that have occurred where all you could see was the world falling apart? It is precisely in these times that we are most afraid that God calls to us. It's when we feel most alone that God is walking right beside us guiding us so that we might recognize Jesus as the one who meets us where we are and accompanies us on the way. We come to celebrate a God who does not leave us alone to fend for ourselves, but a God who walks with us on the long roads of fear and despair, even and especially when we don't notice him. Our God is a God who walks with you along the dark and dangerous journeys of your life. Jesus is walking with you, calling you to open your eyes to a loving, caring, and forgiving God every day of your life. Whether it is in the midst of a pandemic or all the struggles of everyday life or wondering if there's war, Jesus is there with you, being your light and your salvation. You never have to feel alone because God is there, ready to open the eyes of your heart to his presence, both now and forever. So while Michelangelo saw the angel in the marble and chiseled until he set him free, we are called to see Jesus in the world and chip away at sin, fear, and death until others can see him as well. You are called to see Jesus in your neighbor. You are called to see Jesus in those in need. And you are called to see Jesus in yourself. Your job is to remove everything that keeps others from seeing Jesus as well. So I want to ask you to look at the world in your life with new eyes. What is it in the way of, that is in the way of you or others seeing Jesus in your midst? When your eyes are shrouded from Jesus right before you, offering guidance, grace, and love. Through the forgiveness of sins and the resurrection of the body, God has given us all that we need to chisel away at those things. And by doing so, we will help others to see the world for what it truly is, the great masterpiece of God. Amen. And let us pray. Gracious God, we ask that you open the eyes of our hearts to see you with us now and always. May you help us help others to see you walking in their midst as well, knowing that we are never alone, for you are with us both now and forever. And for that, we give our thanks and praise. Amen. Now, let's worship together.
Early in the sermon today, Pastor Derek asked the question, how many holes are in a straw? In an internet survey here in America, 46% of those responding said one hole. 47% said two holes, and 7% said they didn't know or cared. <laughs> the truth is that either answer is correct depending on how you look at a straw. Now let us confess our holy Christian faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Let us now pray together the prayer that our Lord taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, now and forever. Amen. Receive the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and grant to you his peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now have a great week and don't forget, hit the subscribe button. <laughs>